All right, whatever. What's up, everybody? In today's video, we're going to show you exactly how to actually run ads and run ads successfully, guys. And now this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but this is going to be something very important. And whether you are actually running the ads or you have someone that runs the ads for you, you kind of still got to watch this just so you can get the overall concept. And I do have a couple other videos that are going to show you exactly how to hire somebody to run the ads for you. But if that's the case, a lot of the people that you hire, especially the cheap people that hire, they might understand how to set up an ad they might understand how to formulate an ad but they're not going to understand the copy that's involved not going to understand the systems that are involved not going to understand the actual funnel format to actually make them convert at a high rate a lot of people just put them ads out and they just they put the ads out and that, i mean anybody can do that you can watch you can watch a youtube video and you understand how to put a facebook ad out that's not the point of this video the point of this video is how to actually successfully run an ad specifically for credit repair and for you guys that are watching this, guys, make sure you take notes. And for you guys that are watching this, that you're going to hand it out to an, to a, a whatchamacallit, they're going to hand it out to a ad manager. I highly recommend you watch this, maybe skip through it, just because you need to understand this concept, okay? It's a couple of things to run an ad because, yeah, you need to understand this concept so you can actually translate it to your ad manager so that you understand, so that you make sure that they understand what they're doing. And of course, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, you guys always know that you guys always, always ask me a question because I always want you guys to succeed. That being said, let's hop straight into this video. And if you need help hiring the ad manager, by the way, it's another video. You'll be able to see it somewhere in this course. But let me show you exactly what's involved in actually running some successful ads. So why is this showing over here? This is so annoying, right? Let me put this over here, put this over here. Boom, 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 boom. A little technical difficulties, cool. Let me erase all of that. All right, sweet. So biggest part of running an ad is you might get somebody that says they can run ads for you, but they might not convert as well as you want them to. First thing you got to do is, above all, is you got to have your foundation set. And I have another video about this that goes over your social media, so we're not going to go too heavy into this. But the biggest thing is you got to follow that, that credit repair blueprint. And the credit repair blueprint is going to give you a bunch of different optimization points that shows you exactly what you need to do. It's going to be like, yo, you got to have, all right, you got you to make sure that um, you have enough engagement. You got to have a couple of followers. And you got to have, and we're going to show you a strategy over here to get a whole bunch of, of followers really, really quick. You got to have posts where people actually engage in them, right? You got to be, you got to seem active so that people trust you, right? Because when somebody sees that actual ad, they're gonna go over to your actual social media and go over and check your Facebook, they're gonna go over and check your Instagram just to see if you're active, right? If there are people who are gonna trust putting money into you, you better bet that they're gonna check out your social media, all right? That's just a given. So you gotta make sure that your social media presence is up to date. You gotta make sure that it looks good, right? And I'm not suggesting that you make the banners. I'm not suggesting that you make the profile pictures or whatever, the logos, blah, 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 blah. Go to Fiverr. And I have another video that goes over that. But what I'm trying to say, before we actually get into the actual ads and forms and everything, the systems, you got to make sure you have the foundation set up correctly. And I'm, like I said, I have another video that it's probably before this one that you should have watched. So make sure you watch that one first. Now that you have your entire social media presence put into place so that you're pretty much guaranteed for your ads to actually convert better, let me show you how to actually set up the ads and how to actually run them successfully. So I'm gonna be referencing over here to my notes over here. So just don't, I'm make sure I don't miss anything. But there is something you gotta understand. I preach this in a, like, just about all my YouTube videos. The importance of this, for those of you who can't, can't read my chicken scratch that says offer. Your offer is the most important thing, okay? Is realistically, regardless of what niche you're, you are running these ads are into, you're always going to have people that are spending more money than you. So you're always going to be competing against people that are spending more money than you. So you're probably going to start out, and I always recommend kind of starting out like you know, between 50 to 100 bucks a day just so you can figure out the offer works or not. And we're going to that in a second. What I'm trying to say is you're always going to have, regardless if you're running this, regardless if you're running $1,000 a day, regardless if you're running ten thousand dollars a day you're always going to have people you compete against and the thing is when you start getting up to these type of ad spends 
And we're going to scaling in part of another video. But when you start going into those type of ad spends, you're going to start competing with people like Tony Robbins. I have two Bs. I don't know. You're going to start competing with people like, I don't know, Gary V. I don't, I don't know. You're going to start competing with Daniel. Oh, fuck. What's it? Rizak? I forgot his last name. Whatever. But most people know Tony Robbins, guys. You're going to start competing with those guys. And the thing is, when you start competing with those people that are spending thousands, thousands of dollars a day, those people can't afford to lose money to make it up in the long run. Wait, what do you mean by that? I'm saying that these people can afford to upfront, let's say their average cost per client is around 1K, just to, just to keep it simple. 1K is your cost per client, all right? Tony Robbins, they can afford to lose that 900 bucks within the first three months to later pick it up on the fourth month and finally get that $1,000 sale. Then they put it into their funnel and then to the lifetime value, they probably get more sales, all right, to later and later. But what I'm trying to say is that they can afford to lose money, $1,000 up front within the first three months to finally claim that client, finally get that client within the third month. So you're competing against with those people. So what I'm trying to say is that your offer needs to be structured in a way that it's actually able to compete with those big ballers. And especially when you start to scale too. And there's primarily there's two ways of really doing that, crafting an offer. Actually, before I get into that, let me, let me break it down to like this. And I think the best way of doing this was how actually Alex Becker structured this. Let's say, I mean, you should probably already know that how, let's say, for example, Facebook ads, realistically, this entire thing goes, not just Facebook ads, Google ads, any type of ad you do. But let's say that this entire thing is your ad bidding. And how Facebook works specifically is it bids to go to place your ad in, in a specific audience, All right? So this is the audience. Now, you know how people breed horses? You know how you get like, I don't know what the top of the line horse, it's called like a stallion, you know? You got this unicorn, the unicorn is part of the best, so I don't know, from the horses. But Tony Robbins are like those unicorns where they breed those amazing, amazing offers that just takes over this entire audience. And then you're gonna be over here with this little, little offer right there, your little, your little donkey. And that's not really gonna do much. You're gonna get this, this part of the audience where it's just cheap. You're gonna get cheap people and it's not really going to work. People are gonna like this, especially when you people are seeing this donkey and when people are seeing this massive, a beautiful unicorn. You're gonna, people are gonna go to this unicorn. They're not gonna go to that donkey. So what do I mean by that? The best way of competing against somebody that's fully developed like Tony Robbins, the best way of competing against those type of people is to craft an offer that just works, that's specifically bred to beat these unicorns, just like how Tony Robbins did it. I know you're saying that, boy, these people can afford to lose thousands and thousands of dollars in the front end. I understand that. But if you're able to craft an offer that beats theirs, you're going to win every time. Hey, how do I craft that offer? Well, my friend, let me show you. First of all, the best way of really crafting your offer, I mean, there's two ways you can do it. You can obviously do it with free traffic, and I go over that in a little bit in another free traffic course. But to really do that is you got to just test shit, okay? Best way is just test shit. You can take like a, you can take a six-week course, cost $10,000, $20,000 about Facebook ads, specifically how to like do everything. And the last week or last day, they'd be like, yo, Juicy stuff is you got to craft a good freaking offer, all right? That's the most important part, making sure your offer as actually resonates. And there's two ways of crafting this offer that's just going to be everybody. Two ways. The first thing that you can do is you can have an upfront offer. And that upfront offer 
the successful upfront offers are the ones that are actually able to cover your ad spend. So what do I mean by that? I'm talking about maybe a $47 ebook, a $27 uh, 10 dispute letters, five, 10, five to 10 dispute letters, blah, blah, whatever, things like that. Now, what I'm not talking about is those freebies. Main reason is people, any, everyone is going to get that freebie. And you're going to be getting those low quality people with that mindset where they just want free shit. I mean, I've done this before. You've probably done that before. You've seen an ad out there saying, hey, get this free, whatever the F it is. You don't give a shit what, what it is. You just care that it's free. So you put in your spam email and you get that free shit. That's not really, that doesn't really work anymore. Okay. It might've worked before when it wasn't as saturated, but not anymore because that doesn't cover ad spend. Just trust me. It's not going to work. That upfront offer needs to be lower. That, that price point needs to be in that price point so that it's, it covers that ad spend. So it needs to be, so ad, all right. So this, this offer needs to be, the offer needs to be greater than the ad spend, but the offer needs to be less than it requires to hop on a call. What do I mean by that? Typically, in order to close somebody on a call, the price point is going to be above 297, above 300 bucks. Say how it is. All right. Marketers just like to use 297 just so it doesn't seem like it's too much money, whatever. So anything plus 297, that is a call. Anything below 297, you can close them with a landing page. But you also got to keep in mind when you're starting out and the scale, you have like $27 over here and you have like 297 over here. This is kind of where you play with it. This is kind of where you test the offer. When you're playing with it, you got to understand that the more you go towards 297, the harder it is you got to close and the more it's going to take optimizing the page to really just make that ad spend kind of work. In comparison over here, that two, that $27 product is going to be an easier close, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to cover ad spend because it's going to be less. Overall, in general, what I've seen is that if you can sell somebody on a $200 product, $250, you can probably sell them on a, the same amount of people on like a $47 product. Are the same amount of people or just a little bit less? There's not really much of a difference between there. But the thing is, it depends on your offer once again. So this needs to be tested out. A couple other things, people like seeing sevens, you know, people like, like if you're gonna make a $200 offer, make it 197. It's gonna be a $50 offer, make it 47. If it's gonna be a $30 offer, make it 27. But I think that just comes to say, especially when you walk into your store, you see everything like that. So I, get, I figure you understand that. But the entire point of this upfront offer, right? Now that you got kind of understand that, Entire point of this upfront offer. The entire point of this upfront offer is to initially get the people into the door. So the, 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 the funnel kind of looks like this. So they see this ad. I right, see this ad. They go to the landing page. They go to that two-step order form. They buy um, from there. Let me bring over to here. I'm running out of space there. Uh, once after they buy, uh, what I do is I have a bunch of call to actions in the actual product, and I also make them schedule an appointment. Once I buy that forty-seven dollar product, I like some. For example, what I have in one of my marketing eBooks is a two-week challenge, and after that two-week challenge, we say on the actual confirmation page where they get membership access. So over here, uh, either they get they go to another page where they get access or through an email, 
or through a text message, they get access. But on there, they have a link there saying, hey, you must schedule a two-week follow-up. You must schedule a two-week follow-up uh, to make sure that you're on going the right track or for us to answer any questions. So for, for and that pretty much always works if, as long as you kind of say it right. So in order for the people to actually get their login credentials, they have to schedule a two-week follow-up, all right? So what I would do is landing page, they pay for it. Once they pay for it, it would take them to schedule, all right? And then it would have like a little progress bar over here, like going 50% or something like that, saying you're, not almost, you're almost done, just go to schedule your appointment and we're send you over via email and text message your login credentials. Cool, they got them to schedule. So now on the actual day they schedule, then you can help them with the two week follow-up. They already trust you because they bought something from you and it's gonna be a lot easier to close. So then you schedule and you close the deal right there. Now, this, this funnel I found to really work pretty well. The reason being is because a lot of the people that end up doing this ebook, they're not going to do it or the two week challenge or whatever you're offering them. Necessarily, they're not going to do it. They understand that it takes a lot of work. They understand that you know what you're talking about. And they're just not going to have you do it, honestly. That's typically what I see. And in response to that, uh, you can have them also sign up on here, like on the actual ebook itself, on the actual thing. The first page is like, yo, sign up for Identity IQ or Smart Credit or whatever it's called, where it's a dollar trial. And then you get from your affiliate link, you get 20 bucks. So in addition to that 50 bucks, you're also getting the 20 bucks. So that's kind of, that's also kind of covering your ad spend. Now, that's one way of running your ads. You also want to have another campaign that's not going to the upfront offer because not everybody is looking for a how-to. A lot of people are also looking for a done for you. And I'll explain this because this is also very important. So the second method, getting clients is the more common one in a way because a lot of people kind of just do this a little bit wrong and the second method is also going to lead into that upfront offer so you're going to be running them both regardless so let me explain what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing a lead gen ad now this lead gen ad is a facebook lead form that's what it is it's a facebook lead gen form but don't be disrupt because this disrupt i don't think i'm using the right word i'm gonna stop trying to use fancy words because i want you guys to think i'm actually smart <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is you this lead gen ad you can use this for, don't worry you can use it for facebook and instagram okay and guys we'll talk about that in a second and we'll go over all that ad stuff in a second about actually making the copy and everything like that don't worry but this lead gen ad, how this is going to be structured out is generally the lead gen ad, you're gonna get the cheapest leads. You know, the cheapest and it's also gonna be the lowest quality. That's just how it's gonna be. Because there's no really hurdles for the people to actually be able to fill out that lead form, all right? Plus in addition to that, Facebook loves it, absolutely loves it when you keep them on their platform. So the lead cost, you're gonna notice it's gonna be lower pretty much anything else from that lead gen ad there's kind of two ways to go about that that lead gen ad is going to give you a couple of things it's going to give them their their name like first and last it's going to give them email and it's also going to give a phone number my p number those are the three things you gain from the lead form and that's considered as a lead those three things now there's two ways to go about this and I have another, I'm gonna put another video on that exactly goes, that goes to exactly how the Go High Level CRM works. But there's two things you can have. If you're paying the extra monies, I highly recommend going this route. 
where I think it's like 500 bucks a month and go high level and you get something called Eliza. Eliza is an AI bot, okay? Eliza is this excellent AI bot that can help you schedule appointments for you. If you don't have that just yet, you can send them over to appointment center, okay? Regardless, if you have enough money to get an appointment center, you probably have enough money to get Eliza, okay? So whatever, but yeah. So you can, yeah, so you can, these leads come in, you can send them to Eliza, or not necessarily the points, are my bad. You're gonna send them over to, let me erase that real quick. You can send them over to the first workflow. Oops, that's the one. Let me actually click freaking draw. I let me draw. All right, don't be a bitch now, come on. Now this is just being in vain. All right, cool. All right, cool. So it's gonna go from that, as soon as you get the lead to come in to go high level. And by the way, I'll show you how to set that up. Uh, as soon as the lead, you just go to settings, do Facebook forms and mapping or something. I'll try to show that up in the next CRM. But as soon as you come in, you get that lead to come in and you're gonna send them over to the first workflow. I think it's uh, called like manual workflow. You're showing the CRM video for the workflow. And that's just gonna ask some questions to try to schedule an appointment. Like I said, I highly recommend using the Eliza. And this piece, this is, so we're not gonna really talk about this too much because this is kind of self-explanatory. It's just that it's gonna require you to actually talk to them. These are the first questions be like, thanks for showing interest in fixing your credit. Uh, what day are you free? And then you're gonna have to respond for them and schedule the appointment or your appointment center is gonna have to respond to schedule appointment, but I recommend Eliza. And so let's talk about this. So Eliza is going to last around like 30 minutes. After, it, after that, it's going to time out and it's gonna be marked as a missed appointment. And so how this is going to work is there's two options from here, from these things right here. Oops. They can either, you know, they're, going, they're actually going to schedule or it's not going to schedule, it's gonna go over to no response or no appointment, probably no response. All right, so go to schedule or to no response. Once again, my hair sucks, I know. Let, let me know guys, rip into me in the comments down below guys, it's fine, it's hate on me, <laughs> whatever. So no response or to schedule. Now, obviously you're gonna schedule the appointment. It's gonna go into that confirmation reminder, right? And on the actual confirmation reminder, you just got to, on the actual confirmation reminder, it's gonna send their confirmation two hours prior to the appointment, as you saw, I'm gonna say about in the CRM video. And from the show, from the schedule, there's two things that can go to. They can show up, uh, I'll put it over here. They can show up. All right, they can show up or they can miss the appointment. Okay, pretty simple. From show up, you can close them. You can get that sale. That's the best route. That's the one they're all praying for. Or it'll be a no sale. If it's a no sale, you just got to move them over to that 90 day follow up. Or if they ask for like, hey, I don't have the money right now, but like in two weeks I'm gonna get my, my I'm gonna get paid and I can pay for it then. All you're gonna do is just gonna add a add a task to call them back up in in those days and whatever. Just always try to get to them to schedule another appointment, you know? So add a task, I say I wanna I make sure we take notes at a task saying I'm gonna I'm gonna call them back on this day or actually schedule them in for another appointment. Pretty pretty simple. But the show up or no sale, got the no show up, no sale, nine day follow up, or add task follow up. All right. So next one we got is if they missed if they missed the appointment. Okay. So no appointment, no response. From there, same thing over here, no response to. 
if they missed the appointment or the no response, we're just gonna add them to, uh, well, first missed appointment, it's gonna go, it's gonna send them out another workflow saying, hey, you missed the appointment, blah, 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 why don't you reschedule? And it's gonna, like, wait like two days and it's gonna add them to needs nurture. Don't worry, that's like automatic and no response. Uh, the no response here. If they don't respond, you got to move them over here. Or, or if you are doing the manual uh, workflow, after the workflow is over, I think it lasts like five, 10 days, it will automatically move them over to needs nurture. Cool, cool. From needs nurture, now this is where it gets maybe complicated. I don't know, depending on your level. All right, I hope you guys are staying with me. So from here, needs nurture, what we're going to do is we're going to create another audience. So we're going to create a custom audience. So tell your developer or you doing it yourself. If you need to watch a YouTube video on how to do that, I don't want to, honestly, I don't want to make a video on how to make a custom audience. Pretty simple. Create a custom audience. Uh, we're going to call it nurture audience. Okay. And how it works is on the actual workflow, of the goal, of the actual go high level workflow. I'm gonna show you this. The thing is, when I when I send you that blank snapshot, you're gonna have to manually add this yourself because it won't stay on if I send you, because we're not gonna have, have the same audiences and it won't automatically send you that because you have to integrate it yourself. And I'll show you that. Don't worry. Or maybe you already saw it. I don't know. But you're gonna have to make sure that's on the workflow. You're gonna have to make sure that everybody on these nurture opportunity gets into the custom audience of nurture. All right. Cool. Now that nurture, we're going to send them further ads. Okay. And now this nurture is going to send them ads to specifically a landing page. We call it LP, right? To your funnel that you have. Now, now we're starting to use a funnel. Okay. Now we're going to use a funnel. Now we're sending them to the, to the actual funnel. All right. So the landing page goes simply like this landing page, survey schedule, confirm. And if you're finding that you need, if you're finding that your lead quality is low and, but you have a lot of people, if you have a lot of leads, low quality leads, but you're, you're getting a lot of traffic, you're getting a lot of leads. All you have to do is make sure the surveys before the schedule. And in contrast, if the quality is high, but you want more leads, or if you want more leads, the, low, the leads are low right now, all I have to do is move the survey in front of the schedule, okay? So to repeat that, to reiterate that, right now, this is set up so that it, has, it will get more quality by putting the survey in front of the schedule. If you want more leads, less quality, just move the survey in front of the schedule. Everything's about optimization. I'll go about that in a second when you, when you start scaling this, all right? But yeah, so over here, but let's say there's two options here. The people that hit the landing page, they can either go and schedule and follow that form or people that hit the landing page and then they just leave. Those people, we want to still get them. So what we're going to do is this is why we have to make sure that the pixel is installed. So when they hit this page, all right, we're going to have events set up on the page. So the landing page is going to be like view content. Survey is going to be filled out form or filled out survey. Schedule is going to be, once they actually schedule, is going to be schedule. Confirm is just, don't worry, don't need to worry about that. If you want, you put a purchase on that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so view content survey is you can put on a fill out survey and schedule, you can put a schedule on, uh, on the events, on the custom, uh, not the custom events, on the event manager. And there's kind of two ways of going about this. Always just make sure you really test because when you're doing this, you want to go on the, the events manager. And I'll, I'll probably make another video on setting your events. Um, but go to the events manager, put on view content with the actual pixel helper. Um, view content on this. Once they actually click the button of submit survey, that's when you put the fill, fill in survey, the fill a survey or pre qualify survey, whatever it is. And then once you actually submit the schedule button, like click the button, book appointment, then it's a schedule. Or you can do another way is you can just put a view content on here and then go into go high level, make sure it's linked to your Facebook. And then you're gonna have it so that 
as soon as they submit the survey, you go into marketing, go into surveys, and on the option on there under surveys, and I'll show you this, if they submit the survey, you add it as a submit survey, submit application, I think it's called. And then you go over to the calendars, and when they, settings, calendars, and when they submit the calendar, it considers on the face pixel as a schedule. Kind of just two ways of going about it. Just make sure you always test the events so you don't have a like duplicate events going on, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, so the people that hit the landing page but didn't fit, finish a survey, didn't schedule, these people that viewed the content but didn't fill in the survey, we're going to create a custom audience for this. I'm going to call it I'm going to call it web viewers, website visitors, whatever. Web visit. All right. And these are going to be the people in that plus view content minus submit application. Submit app kind of minus survey. So specifically, it's only going to be the people that view the content that did not submit an application, did not submit the survey. And from there, these people, what we're just going to do is we're going to take them over to that upfront offer. Just like that. Because chances are, if they're not willing to schedule an appointment with you, they're the type of people that just want to do it themselves. And you want to capitalize on that. So that we can get these people in, they buy our forty-seven dollar product or whatever it is, they get the money back in. I mean, you get that you pay for the ad spend, all this shit, and then you they buy the upfront offer, it pays your ad spend, you drop them into your uh, Facebook Facebook group, and then you can later upsell them on something else, maybe a more advanced course on how to fix the credit themselves, or maybe a yeah, maybe you have a follow up system on there that sell them a course, or maybe you put them into the Facebook group, you sell them a consulting, sell them business funding, whatever it is. But that pretty much takes them back to the first system that we had that was talking about the upfront offer that we had as one of the offers that we can utilize. Cool. I know there's a lot on you guys. Um, but like I said, the, be the biggest concept that you guys have to understand is this. You guys have to understand this concept so you so that you can figure out that your ad managers are doing the right thing. Biggest thing. Next thing is how we structure the ads. So let's talk about this. Clear my drawings. Actually, yeah, so the next video is gonna be how to structure the ads. So I'm gonna make that into another video. So hold on to there and I'll see you guys there.